of the first slide. So the question was, before he tells us that it's not enough anymore, I wanted to know if there are reasons for that, and Vincent yes, said that he was going to go the over first, them. That's part of the first slide. I will explain the current behavior and why it's not enough. So, yeah, I have something like four slides, the current behavior, why we should change, and which, in which kind of condition. So, the current behavior, the right now for the EES, so energy aware scheduler, at wake up, we will select the most pro energy efficient CPU for the task according to the current state of the system, what the utilization of its CPU, which tasks are running where, and so on. Um, all this is based on the fact that we assume that this state will remain all the time. So we'll not have to, the condition will not change while the, the task is running. Then we have another part which we call we can actively migrate a task which is stuck on a CPU because so when a, if a task is put on a, on, on a CPU which at the end is not the right one, not enough capacity, have to share with something else. So the task might not have wake up event anymore because not enough capacity to, to, to run to, to idle. So in this case, the task will not migrate anymore. And usually the, the things that we have, so we have this misfit task happening in this case. So we will trigger a load balance and most of the time an idle load balance that will check where there is a misfit task to pull this task somewhere else, a better CPU. <clears throat> but that means that for that we need to wait for this, the task to go over the CPU capacity and we need to trigger another idle load balance. So we need to wake up most of the time an idle CPU that will then pull the, the task on probably a third CPU. <clears throat> so, uh, so the main problem is that this assumption that we have regular wake up and we will not, we are not stuck on the CPU is less and less true. And we are, we, we are facing more more, con more case where, uh, in fact, um, the condition that have been used to, to place the task at the beginning is not true anymore, mainly because we have some other tasks that can wake up. And the decision that you make can be screwed up by the, the next waking up task. We are doing more and more frequency capping compared to before. So the, the CPU with full capacity can be quickly capped to a lower capacity. So there is not enough capacity anymore. We have some update of the energy model as well. So by the time you make a decision, the energy model can change and you are no more on the most efficient CPU, most energy efficient CPU. You have some U clump and U clump is dynamically used by some by Android, for example. So the U clump can just clump the, the CPU capacity and the clump can change over time. So which means that the condition can change quite quite often. And then there is also the, the, the allowed CPU mask update also that can change. So some CPU might have to migrate and we are not using this in this case and, and, and the change, or we can pull some other task on the local CPU. All these conditions are at the end make the, the decision no more uh, the right one. <coughs> so, the goal for us is to put more opportunities to migrate the task and to migrate the task based on the current. So we want to regularly check if we should not migrate a, run, a runnable task, not a, run, a runnable task to another CPU. So <clears throat> for that, and the goal is to keep the task efficiently placed. So if a task which was put on a big core at some point, because all the medium and little core was fully busy. Maybe now it's time to migrate that on a, on a medium core and little core. So we want to keep the task placement efficient all the time and according to ongoing changes. <coughs> Another thing is that we want to remain scalable, scalable and efficient. So before coming to the push pullback mechanism, I try to look at the um, load balance. That's something we discussed with some of you. The goal was to say, okay, we should make the load balance more energy efficient. The main problem with the load balance, and that's also something that is happening with the misfit task, is that one CPU must detect that one task is 
not placed on the right, on, I mean, is not the best CPU for, for this local task. So you need to trigger an idle load balance or load balance. You need to set which task is the wrong one. You, not, you have to wake up the load balance on another CPU. This CPU have to look at all the CPU. If there is one with a misplaced task, then once you selected the CPU, you have to check which task is it. And during all this time frame, I mean, everything can have changed. I mean, the task can go back to sleep, migrate. Another task is there, which is more, um, even less efficient. So it's not really scalable. I mean, if you have to look at 1,100 or 1,000 of tasks, you can't do that, even, even on the periodic load balance. The goal there is to take advantage that when a task which was running is scheduled out, not sleeping, but in the waiting list, in some condition that I would like to discuss with you uh, today, maybe we should check if we could find a more efficient CPU and we can migrate that task. The main advantage is that this task is not the running one, so you're sure to not, you don't need to do some ac uh, active load balancing, active migration, so it's a bit easier. <clears throat> and, um, and, um, and that's pretty much, I would say, yes. So the goal is not to bypass the default wake-ups. I mean, the goal is not to, to do that all the time because that will really have an override. Calling or executing find energy efficient CPU, it's costly, I mean, it's a cost. So you can't do that for each and every tick. Well, I don't think you, we can do that. But we can do that in some, when, when, some, when we meet some condition. That's what, what I would like to, to discuss. So typically when a task, what we call is stuck on the CPU, so there is no wake up because not enough compute capacity for it. That's one obvious reason. Maybe there are a few others. Um, and I think for, yeah, so the, 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 the push callback mechanism, it's typically the same that is used with RT uh, scheduler. It's just that instead of taking into account some real time condition to push a task, we are just taking some energy aware condition to say, okay, maybe I should push this task to, some, to another CPU. So the question is mainly when. So <clears throat> right now the goal, my, my first goal was when there is no wake up anymore. So typically you clump max is one reason for a task to not wake up anymore because we, we cap the compute capacity for this task. So I mean, the task will become an always running task and the CPU will not be overutilized because we are capping the max uh, the capacity. So that's, that's the first and obvious um, condition. Then there is the misfit task. So we have some mechanism right now why we are waking up the, we are triggering a load balance that will pull the task on another CPU. Maybe we can also use this condition to detect that the task is not on the right CPU and should migrate. Uh, <clears throat> there are also some, uh, some uh, low pace conditions. So we can be in some situation when there is some low frequency or when we are sharing the CPU with other tasks. So it can take some time for the task to run. And the more longer we are running, I would say the, that uh, your condition, the, your initial, initial condition are even worse than before. So I put this as an example. That typically, that, uh, that's quite an obvious use case where Sorry? Yeah, so it's a, it's a big little, big medium, uh, little medium big uh, system. So the first four tasks are little, ta little CPU. The CPU four to CPU six are medium and CPU seven the big. So it's like a dragon board RB5. So the, the case is that there is a three small tasks working up periodically. Normally they are running, I think uh, I set them to run something like two milliseconds every 10 milliseconds. But with the frequency scaling, I mean, you end up running uh, six milliseconds every 10 milliseconds. But that's fine, I mean, that's the goal of the energy efficiency. So you have enough time to, to run everything. And then there is another task, which is a long running, so it's, it, it should run for more time, 10 milliseconds, I think, but from time to time. So at the beginning there, the decision is pretty obvious that 
and say, you, you can't really put this long running task on the medium because uh, it's already used. But you can have some situation So if you wake up and the small tasks were all running, you will select the big, ta the big CPU. But if all the small tasks go back to sleep one millisecond later, you will run, in this case, 44 milliseconds on the big CPU without any good reason. And that, uh, and that show that the next wake up, because there is no, 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 little, uh, task, no small task running on, then we go to the medium, to the medium uh, CPU. So in this case, maybe after 10, 20 milliseconds, it's worth checking that we should migrate back to the, to the medium core because the medium core are idle. That's one thing. So, so yeah. Right now, so I send a, 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 a patch set, uh, a rusty patch set. The condition that I put are pretty obvious is that I want mainly to, to find the case where the task doesn't have wake up anymore. So for that, I'm checking if the utilization go above the CPU capacity, which is a good indication, but that's not enough because when you're sharing the CPU with other tasks, your utilization can be lower than the CPU capacity, but the CPU, cap C CPU capacity is... That's, yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm also taking into account the renewable because the renewable is how long you are waiting, how long you are running or waiting for the CPU. So I'm using these two conditions to trigger to trigger the, the this push callback. So what's happening in, in this case? So when the task is switched back to the waiting list, I'm checking these two conditions, and if one of those are true. I'm putting this task for push callback, and I will run the find energy efficient CPU to see if there is a better CPU. Yeah, there is a. Oh, there. oh, yeah. So, I would like to be able to uh, trigger migration of tasks to um, to say uh, energy efficient CPUs when the system, the total load of the system is small enough. When? when the total load of the system is small enough, yeah. like to start migrate things towards the, the energy efficient thing, the CPUs, because then they, uh, below a certain level, they should all fit there, right? Yeah. So, then, but that doesn't need to happen like immediately. It can go like, take some time to, to move them towards the, the more energy efficient the CPUs, but but I'd like that to ha to, to happen at one point, like start moving them. You mean you would like or that? Yeah, I would like. Okay, you're using the energy aware scheduler? Not yet, but you know. That's good to know. <laughs> Maybe you know no, yeah, in the that's, future. No, that's fine. But yeah, so yeah, there. The, my point there is really about having some co which condition we should take because the, the mechanism in itself is pretty simple when the task switch back to the waiting list, not sleeping. If there is a condition, then we put it to be a possible pushable task. And, and, and the, uh, the main advantage is that you'll, you have only one task waking up, so from a scalability point of view, you will not um, start to, to increase one, ten, hundred of tasks waiting to be pushed. And if it's failed, that's it. And that might be the next time. So, and then the condition, yeah, I'm pretty open. I have, I have some condition, but maybe there are a few more conditions. In this example. What, what Rafael is saying happens when uh, the utilization is low and find efficient CPU will find that small CPU to run it, right? Sorry? The whole point of EAS. Can you repeat your question? We didn't understand, Ricardo. Yes, if I was saying that what Rafael was describing happens when the utilization of the task is low and then find efficient CPU will find that small CPU that is needed. Yeah, so in, 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 this, in my situation, the goal is to call all the time find energy efficient CPU. And that can end up that the find energy efficient CPU say, okay, the, the local CPU is the best one, keep staying there or you should migrate. So but the goal is that we have only one function and we don't have to duplicate or, okay. 
almost duplicate what is going on. You have only one function, find energy efficient CPU that you're calling now, not only in the wake up, but from time to time for a task which seems to be stuck on a CPU and might be migrated somewhere else. So in this case, when would you end up calling it? Is it because it'll end up hitting a misfit? So yeah, so in, yeah maybe for this one, it's, there, is, there is the case where uh, I have another one where we need active migration when you don't have wake up anymore. The point, so I, at tick, I'm doing something similar. Yeah, that's a good point. For the tick, so when you have only one, CPU, uh, one task running on the CPU, you don't have any context switch anymore. So in this case, in the tick, if there is only one CPU, I'm triggering the similar situation. I mean one thread. But only when you have only one running task. Otherwise, I'm waiting for the context switch, just to make sure that you don't. The goal is not to call that too many times, but at, at least once a time. And then the other question is, let's say this was lined up so that this uh, 44 millisecond green thread woke up when all the other threads were sleeping. Will you end up migrating it today? Sorry? Into the little CPUs? If which? If the green thread woke up while all the other threads were sleeping, today, as of today, yeah, that, would you end up migrating it to the mid CPU? That, that's what is happening there. You and see? then what happens with the, when they wake up again, you move it back out to the big CPU? Oh, when the, when the other one, I don't, uh, I haven't checked, but probably one of the little will go back to the, will go to the big, because it's more efficient. Mm. Sorry? Yeah, go. Yeah. I think the answer is no, we would not uh, wake up the, the green task on one of the medium CPUs because there's a block util from the the, the other task that's still there. So you would still see them no, after, from the... After if even if they're sleeping, there's block utilization, right? The CPU utilization for CPU 4 is not going to go down to zero right when the task it, blocks. It's going to go fact, down like... Yeah, in fact, it's happened quite quickly after that because all this utilization sure. are not that big. So uh, effectively, I think there are cases where maybe 10 milliseconds, if it wake up 10 milliseconds after the last one go back to sleep, then it wake up directly on the middle right. CPU. Yeah. But yeah, I agree that there is this block utilization that can remain. But that, I mean, that's why, I mean. So another point I wanted to yeah. make is, uh, you, you mentioned the case where you have co-scheduling, for example, you have two tasks running yeah. and there's no idle time on the CPU. So this is exactly one of the reasons why we have the over-utilized thing today. Because in, in a case like that, if there's no idle time on the CPU, it means that yeah. both tasks are competing, like, and, yes. they, and you have no idea how much they actually want. So the utilization of the CPU is no longer a good proxy for how much the task wants. It becomes an artifact of how much it was given by the scheduler. And then the problem is if you call find energy efficient CPU with that, we're gonna go into the energy model and say, oh, this task wants this much. And then we're gonna, go, we're going to make energy calculations based on that, but we have no clue what the task actually wants. The, yeah, the point is that uh, if you, at some point, if your utilization has been stable enough and then you put these two tasks on the same, your utilization is still almost correct. Oh, if you wait well, too okay. much, I agree, once you are 10, uh, 24, I mean, that's the, it. The thing is, uh, when, when you have two tasks, let's say, let's say they have yeah. the same nice value and they have both 50% utilization, yeah. uh, you have no idea if they just got on the same CPU or if they've been, you know, like, is, is it, do they both want 51% of the CPU or do they both want 100%? I have no idea, and no. you can't tell. And so, that? so that's, that's one of the reasons why the energy model-based placement, when the utilization values are kind of wonky like that, is kind of broken. So we need to be careful I, with that. I should have, yeah. The, the point is that there is, I, in my patch, there is another point that we are calling the find energy efficient CPU all the time, even when overutilized, because we have seen that when you switch to the overutilized state, you spread a lot of things. And if you have K, uh, K worker, typically, the K worker will run less than a millisecond, but that will be enough to spread everything everywhere, and then you take time to pack. Yeah. Uh, um, sorry, one quick one. At some point, you were mentioning that the runnable time would also be included as part of calculating the utilization. Yeah. Has that landed yet or no? No, not for calculating the utilization, to detecting when we should, the, the task is probably stuck, and we should look for another, another thing. Okay. And I think we are, oh. I'm running out of time, yes. One last question. Yes. Yet now, yeah. You mentioned that uh, you call fine energy efficiency view all the time, but I think what Canton was saying that uh, once you have so many tasks on the run queue and the sum of their utilization actually exceeds the capacity, yeah. 
then the energy model is not working anymore correctly. How do you cope with this? Because we're capping, we're capping utilization like at the sum of the capacity. And then if you go into the energy model calculation, it, it can seem... No, yeah, I, I have removed... In, so, there is two, so there is the push, push mechanism. Okay. The goal is to evaluate which CPU is the most efficient. With some, and then in the energy efficient CPU selection, uh, I made some change. Okay, but, uh, cool. I have to look at your patch. Yeah, that's okay. uh, not yeah. part of, yeah, I, need, I, I have to say, that's not part of this discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you.